Hello everybody, I'm Mike Campbell with Region 9 Education Service Center. Today I'm visiting with Christian Avera. And Christian's one of our education specialists and what is your specialty? What are your What's your responsibility here? Well, Mike, at Region 9, I'm responsible for um, training our teachers and supporting our teachers and students th um, that teach kiddos with autism. So that's really my passion and the main thing that I do at Region 9. I do several other things, including inclusion and some other things like that, but my main focus is autism. All other duties as a sign right. is in our contract, and then that's good. This is Autism Awareness Month. That's right. And we hear a lot about autism, and we all know somebody probably that uh, uh, it deals with that. How would you explain autism to someone who has no idea what autism is? Well, that's a good question, and it's a question that people have been trying to answer for a long, long time. Um, we do have a lot more information about autism today and the year 2018 than we did even 10 or 15 years ago. But basically, autism is truly a neurodevelopmental um, disability, so there's a difference in the brains of kiddos that have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorders. Um, it most often will affect communication issues, um, it will affect social behavioral issues, and also some sensory issues. Um, so when we look at kiddos with autism, kind of the characteristic that most people are familiar with are um, going to be children that are nonverbal, that might have some repetitive patterns of motion like rocking or flapping or um, even some can be more serious like self-injurious behaviors and then we have a lot of other students too that really are considered nonverbal which doesn't mean that they don't talk it just means that they really don't have a lot of what we call functional communication skills so those are sort of the hallmark characteristics that people are, are most familiar with. When's the earliest you could really maybe start identifying signs that this might be a, an issue? Well, it's interesting because with the newest research that I've um, read, you can, if you're a trained observer, you can start to see some symptoms of autism as early as six to eight months old. Um, most often you're looking at probably 18 to 24 months. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, across the United States, the, the most average age for diagnosis is until four years old. So mm -hmm. we're having a harder time. The earlier we can get kiddos diagnosed and, and determine really what their strengths and weaknesses are, then the more interventions we can uh, make so available. So for a parent, perhaps, a new, a new parent mm -hmm. that has a child that might be showing some of these tendencies, I've heard walking up on tiptoes, mm -hmm. that sort of thing might be something right. that would be an indicator. What should they do? Well, the first thing that I would suggest is to contact their pediatrician. Um, there are universal screeners available for pediatricians to use, and, and most pediatricians are very familiar with looking for some of the signs and symptoms. Um, you mentioned tiptoe, toe walking. Also, the lack of eye contact is, is usually a hallmark for, for new moms mm -hmm. um, when, they're, when their babies don't uh, make a lot of eye contact with them. There's also what we call joint attention, which is maybe for a little bit older child. When they see something that's interesting, oftentimes they will get the attention of their caregiver to show and share that experience with them. So that's often lacking in kiddos with autism. So many of those things you'll notice very young. Um, one of the problems, and, and I think most parents can relate to this, is if it's your first child, you really don't have anything to compare it to. So oftentimes we think it's developmental, and, and many times those things are developmental. And when kids are little, their developmental milestones are kind of all over the map. But if you have a, a suspicion or some type of a, a feeling that maybe something's not quite right, the first thing I would say is to contact your pediatrician because that's going to be your first line of defense for little bitties. All right, so we've contacted pediatrician, we've run a test, and it's positive. We do see indications of autism. Mm -hmm. Then what? Well, I'll tell you, it's funny because there isn't a test for autism. So unfortunately, um, it's not like a simple blood test or, or a brain scan. Mm -hmm. um, but there are lots of different ways to diagnose children with autism, and, and your pediatrician can help you find those avenues. But once you do have a diagnosis of autism, then that will come to most often, especially for a young child, from a psychiatrist that then will be able to give you recommendations for therapies and interventions. Um, what we know more now than we ever have in the past is that the earlier the intervention, the more successful. And also a very um, 
kind of um, specific targeted intervention. Um, many people refer to it as ABA therapy, but there are a lot of other therapies that will work. But as far as really teaching students with autism a form of communication and a way to be able to express their wants and needs and to lower their frustration and anxiety levels, that's gonna be probably some of the most powerful interventions that we can offer to kids really of any age. And I assume there's different type and no two autistic children are like just like no right. two any child is alike. That's right. Know? Well, autism is a spectrum. It's a, an umbrella spectrum, if you will, of um, pervasive developmental disorders. And so autism spectrum disorders run from mild to severe. So um, when, when you're going through the testing, the assessment, and the diagnosis process, then you're really looking at what kind of, what level of supports does this child need? Are they a, a child that really is not going to have functional language so they might need a higher level of support or is it a child that we might have at one time referred to as maybe Asperger's but now we are referring to them as higher functioning students with autism um, that have they have plenty of uh, communication abilities but maybe they have some some social awkwardness or they have um, really uh, a difficult time understanding kind of the world around them and they're very literal concrete thinkers oftentimes and so we've got to help them socially to be able to really um, access their school environment to be able to to be successful so here we are it's time now for our child to go to school mm -hmm. what do we do with uh, in regard to talking to our teachers working with our school district right. to, to get the best outcome for our child well there's a lot of things that we can do and luckily in this day and age so many of our teachers are really um, knowledgeable about autism supports in the classroom and students with autism. Um, it is unfortunate we have uh, such a high rate of autism across the United States right now, but our teachers have done a, a lot of hard work and they, I really feel like from from my experience, they have a lot of good resources and a, good, a lot of good information. But as a parent with a, a child coming into the school setting, um, you can come in at a lot of different levels. But if you have a, a student that has been diagnosed fairly early, we have a lot of early educational supports, like a PPCD program that's going to be through our special education department. Um, you probably would have started in an ECI, early childhood intervention program, and that kind of funnels you into the, the school setting. If that's not your path if you haven't haven't been through that kind of preschool areas then you need to just contact the administrator of the school that your child will be attending and let them know either we have had a diagnosis from an outside psychological evaluation or we suspect that this that our child may have some autistic tendencies and the administrator can then help in the referral process um, to, to have a special education referral in the school setting. Uh, regardless of whether you have an outside uh, diagnosis or not, when your child is, is school age, they will have to be assessed by the school to determine educational need, which is a little bit different than a clinical assessment. So you know, It's been my observation over the years that autistic people mm -hmm. can be very productive and oh, useful very, in mm -hmm. our society. It's not uh, a problem that we can't overcome. It's just a, right. just a challenge. Well, it's interesting, Mike, because um, Really, a long time ago, when I first started in education, um, we were still referring to autism as a disease that needed to be cured, and so we were, were funding, research, looking for a cure. But over the last 20 or 25 years, really, um, we've moved from that thinking to understanding that autism truly is just another dimension of, of a person that has been diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. Um, there are so many wonderful benefits and so many great positive things about um, people on the spectrum that I think now in this day and age, we've really come to, to appreciate and honor. And so that's a lot of our training really is to support teachers in seeing what the wonderful things that kiddos with autism can offer to the world and to the school environment. So what are some resources maybe that, that teachers and parents sure. and those of us have an interest, uh, uh, grandparents, that would help us? Well, that's a great question. And we have, I've said to many teachers before, there's never been a better time to teach children with autism than now because we do have so many resources. Um, of course, Region 9 is a great resource for all of our Region 9 schools. But also, um, we have a, a statewide network for the leadership and autism training, and it's called the TSLAT. So it's T-S-L-A-T. That's our network through, and it's housed in Region 13 in Austin. But we have a website, and it's um, txautism.net. 
it's a wonderful website. It has more resources than you could probably ever use. There's a terrific learning library that has online modules. We have over 36 online modules. Some of them are very lengthy. Some of them are 15, 20 minutes. Um, that's a really great resource. So that would be the first place that I would uh, really recommend people look. The other thing is here in our local area, we have a great parent network called FAST, and it's Autism Parent 2, the number 2, mm -hmm. parent.net, and that's the, the email address address but they have a wonderful organization I've been to some of their events and they get together about monthly maybe every other month sometimes and host a lot of events and it's just a great support system for parents so that's another option for um, parents to look into and then um, kind of globally something that's um, really worldwide is autismspeaks.org that's a really great website um, there are a lot of websites out there and unfortunately a lot of them are not um, are not something that you would want to recommend to everyone but autismspeaks.org has a lot of really great resources including the first hundred days toolkit which is a wonderful resource for newly diagnosed um, families families that have a, a student so just diagnosed. April is Autism, autism Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. What are your final thoughts? Well, our, the main reason that, that we really, I was, and I've been thinking about it for quite some time, why do we celebrate Autism Awareness in April? And April's a great month to do it. It's spring. But also, it's, you know, people and individuals with autism, when you meet them, um, there's just something so unique and unusual and, and really amazing about these people. So it's just fitting that we would take time to really focus focus on the awareness that autism brings to our communities and to really understand the individuals that we talk about as being on the spectrum. They are wonderful members of our community and they have um, worthwhile input and jobs and do all kinds of great things in this community. So I'm very proud that we do take um, the month of April to really bring awareness to autism. Very good. And uh, if you have questions for Christian, uh, I'll put her contact information right. up. You can check with her. She, of course, Christian Avera here at Region 9 Education Service Center. Thank you, Christian, for sure, all you thank do. thank you. Thanks for, for having me on and letting me talk about autism. All right. We all have a purpose, and our job is to find what that purpose is. Thanks okay. for watching.